What is good? <laughs> What's that? It's a machine gun. I don't know. I saw him doing it in the Saints game. It looked cool. <laughs> Were they? Uh, some terrible seller. It didn't look cool. It looked awful. Hmm. Uh, how you doing, Jay Wayne? What's good? We're back. Oh, Apparently, it's, it's fucking Santa. It's the holiday can't season. Say what, can't it's say hot. what I wanted to say about Santa right there, because the liberal media. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let the liberal media tell you how to think and feel. So we're bipoding it again. No guests this week. We'll be back with the guests a little later. we got some good stuff in the works for you. we got, you know, we're, we're on the Booker hotline. Got my man Jay Wayne. Big Co. Who knows? Who knows at this point? I got something for you though. Here, let's let's uh, uh, little little OG crack. What you got for me? This is the craft one, so there's never as good of a pop. You get it angled just right. Ooh, that was a pretty decent one. Not terrible. Good spray. Good spray. Most people don't like the spray. Embrace the spray. It's gonna happen. I just look at it. I ask myself one simple question. How would Stone Cold feel about it? <laughs> that guy needs to chill out. Oh my God, gang! It's a rattlesnake. This is a pretty good commercial where they're on the phone trying to get the Hell's Kitchen guy to get switch over to insurance or whatever. Stone's just pissed at him. That guy needs to chill out. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing? We're gonna do. We got some new ADP from DLF. Uh, so we reviewed it last week. We're going to kind of keep this going throughout most of the off season. We feel that it's important to keep your thumb on on the uh, pulse of the you know stock market of or the market. Or I know some people don't like that, but you know the market of where guys are in the general public's consensus. Now, you know we'll use Dynasty League football because we know that they they have something that's semi reliable. But as the off season rolls on, we'll also start doing our own mock drafts with our own people, so we'll be able to kind of weigh those against. Uh, what these guys have going on, they do uh, six mocks and um, kind of average it out from there. Uh, so this this is the new DLF ADP. It usually comes out you know mid to halfway through uh, a month. So you know it's always like a little bit late. Kind of what's going on in the actual NFL here. This doesn't account for Chris Godwin's torn ACL. If right, that makes sense. It's not that up to date, or the but, fact that Elijah Mitchell's missed several weeks up to this point. Right, so we're gonna do um, some love hate through this reaction of the new ADP here. Hey, hey, um, hey. <laughs> little Grinch for you. We'll keep we'll keep this moving. Uh, like I said, throughout the off season, we'll do some iteration of a love hate thing, or just kind of a you know this is biggest movers, all all that kind of stuff. But you know this is this is how you can figure out if there's a you know. If there's a flaw in the matrix of, hey, I should be buying this guy, the value's here on this guy, apparently there, maybe there's some low public on that, um, public appeal or public opinion on this guy, so maybe you should be trying to send some offers out on that. Um, but let's uh, let's get rolling. All right. Round one. Fight! <laughs> All right, so like I said, we're going to try to kind of go through here, love it and hate it, not going to do every single guy, and we're going to actually get a little outside the top 50 here. Um, so Got to right off the rip on the first round, JT. Love it. Yeah, you know, sure. Not you know, sure. Love it. Um, Move him up. Justin Jefferson, uh, Najee Harris, Jamar Chase, DeAndre Swift. That seems like you know most people are kind of in the in that vein somewhere, feeling something like that. CD Lamb coming in there next. Um, CD holding it down at six. So you know, again, everybody kind of feels like we did, we've done the running back talk. We've done some wide receiver talk. <laughs> You know, seems seems you know seems credible. Uh, now checks the next out. one checks out. Next one we got Joe Mixon here at seven. We just did, like I said, did a little bit of running back show uh, with Robbie Jeffries of the Fantasy Authority, um, and we didn't quite throw Joe Mixon up this high, but the public has has thrown him up to RB four. Um, what do you what are your you're your shaking heads over there? Double hate. Double hate, huh? Hmm. It's too much, man. How are you gonna take Mixon so high? I could see it being a little high there. Probably got it, like I said. Probably got to be below CMC for me. Probably got to be below Barkley for me. Um, what the funk is that? If, if you have a website and you start playing a goddamn video with sound just because I'm on it, you can eat a dick. Yeah, I agree. That's a, a piss poor uh, idea. So, so you hey, made the. Your heart now. Made the audio video Jason very upset. George is getting upset. 
<laughs> Way better than George. George's kind of have all the same things going on. Mm-hmm. I have a job, okay? He's had, he's had some great jobs. <laughs> he worked for the Yankees. He was a hand model for like a day. Mm. He can't he can't not fuck it up though. I'm I'm better at not fucking it up. I don't always like do the right thing, but I'm pretty good at not doing the wrong thing. So you think Joe Mixon is fucking it up at RB four? I think yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, like I said, I think I think for us, like when we talked about it, I know Christian, Saquon, probably Gibson, uh, and then, you know, when we get a little more into the offseason, I'm sure maybe uh, a JK Dobbins could I could see rising up here, youth and uh just overall ability i could see javante williams kind of hopping up there in front of joe mixon uh so i'm not gonna go double hate or uh loathe from from old grinchy boy there but uh i could you know I, i'm okay first hate on the board there all right hate, hate, hate. <laughs> all right so christian mccaffrey's next some people may have a problem with that i got no problem with it it's uh, fine Tyreek, you know, we kind of had a lengthy discussion about a top five here. They got him as wide receiver four. Jay Wayne said he had to be in there for him and 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 should be. So I know you don't have a problem with that. I could maybe see him dropping down a few spots for me personally, um, but I'm I'm not I'm not going to give it a hate or a love. Properly rated. Uh, now we got DK on here. How do you feel about that? I'm indifferent. So I, can't, I can't. I can't. DK's wide receiver five, uh, ten ADP overall. Ten overall is probably high. Five wide receiver probably still fine for me. Still okay. a young dude, super young, uber talented. Ceilings. We've already seen the ceiling. Uh, I mean, maybe we haven't seen the ceiling. I don't think we have. Yeah. So I, I'm still down to take a shot. At DK. I probably would take Pitts. Yeah, so I don't hate or love the DK right here. I'm a little indifferent. We got a lot of off season moving parts that could manipulate some things, but the the talent is is so raw and ridiculous, and and the the human being is just built like a goddamn god. So I'll uh, I got no real problem with that. Like I said when we did the wide receiver show, go check that on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe so you get all these uh, all these videos. Uh, but I got no. If you wanted to just Throw A.J. Brown in that top five. You're not going to get much of an argument from me. But this next one, Kyle Pitts at 11, just about rounding out the first round. I could go love it or hate it. With love it, I would say let me get all that value. And I love that I could take Kyle Pitts right there because we're always playing tight end premium. And I could say hate it because it's way too low for me. I'd shoot him up, shoot him up, shoot him up. Right. The fact that his ADP hasn't changed since November, if you're if you're watching on YouTube, we got we got the graphic to to kind He's of show 21. the correlation. He hadn't lost any value or gained any value in a month. That that's like that's stagnant. To me, that's like equity found because every time he takes the field the value is probably going up. So because yeah. he's learning and figuring it out. And, and this is not tight end premium. Right. It it would be higher if it was Right. He'd be top five for sure. And premium, you know, like I, I got I got no problem taking uh, you know, Jonathan Taylor and then and then Pitts if that's if that's what you want to do in tight end. I gotta, premium, get, J- I gotta get JJ and, and if if you're getting if you're getting uh Let me get JJ. If you're getting Kelsey level production, there isn't another wide receiver you can you could tell me you would rather have in, in peak Kelsey with tight end premium. Um so and I think that's that's easy that's where Pitts can be. He's that talented probably an actual better receiver better athlete than uh travis kelsey is so sure and he's 20 fucking one so. a lot of projection to and, take and number that two value, overall that, that value just isn't going anywhere it's just not like it's just going to get better he's going to continue to improve we know that the tight end position is typically one that takes a while uh to really peak out and you know we're seeing it now i mean waller kind of had a weird career kelsey's you know still He's he crescendoed at like you know thirty, and we're just still crescendo. we're still just I don't know if that was a proper use there, but it sounded like it could work. He's peaking, he uh, peaked, yeah, right? The crescendo, right, right. Um, but you know he's still at thirty two. He's still thirty two, and I think he's still in the, the top three. And if it was a tight end premium, you know people would probably argue for he could, you could go in the in the second round. I, I don't know how I feel about that. But when we get there, we'll get there. But then I'm right. in it. So ending round one, Alvin Kamara. It hasn't been that fun right now for an Alvin Kamara owner. Something is going to change. In- I mean, it was fun last week, but this pre, like two weeks ago, but this, he didn't help you in the fantasy playoffs. That's right. for sure. There isn't, something is going to change. No, I don't think any quarterback on that roster is going to be the quarterback for the Saints next year. I just can't see it. 
I mean, I guess you could ro- load it up with Jameis again, but I think they're going to do their best to try to find somebody. I mean, he's coming off a torn ACL. You can't count on him. For some reason, they they love T- Taysom Hill. I, I I could I wouldn't be surprised if they were like, no, we're going Taysom Hill. But seems like they're going to get a better quarterback. In right. There. So I think you know if you can if you can solve a quarterback problem and get the the passing game of Alvin Kamara you know back in in full establishment, um, I think I think I could justify this. But for now, I would probably drop him down uh, a couple pegs. You know, going into that twenty seven year old season, um, so I could give that a, a borderline um, not hate, but I'm disappointed in drafters. <laughs> I'm I'm fine. Uh, yeah, so I'm fine with it. Saquon Barkley for me would have been would end of the first round. Got no problem with that. I could I could I could take Saquon a little higher. I'm still putting my trust in Saquon. Give I think, me Kamara. I think you're gonna have some problems with that. You're you're out on Saquon. Uh, well, not over Kamara. Like I don't. I'm not out on Saquon, but I'll take Kamara. Yeah, I, I gotta go Saquon <clears throat> all day. All right. Um, Nick Chubb here. Round I, two. Pretty indifferent. Oh, you already moved on to Saquon. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, top of round round two there. Nick Chubb got to be twenty six. Kareem Hunt's hanging around. The Browns are definitely a run first team, but as our as our friends who have been on the podcast the last couple of weeks has talked about Nick Chubb, like he's awesome, he's fantastic, but it just seems like you know you're seeing him be awesome and still in in some weeks not not be in that elite fantasy spectrum of running back scoring so i think that holds him down a little bit for me um because he loses some red zone stuff to kareem hunt he loses some pass catching to kareem hunt he's an awesome player love the guy and the knee the the old knee injury that was devastating in college you know starts to just is always in the back of my mind with nick chubb uh with with what happened to todd Gurley there kind of moving forward how the 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 hill for him could be a you know a, a steep drop off at some point I can't argue against any of what you just said. I want to, but that's probably a little too high. AJ Brown, I think I love it. Yeah, I think uh, I think I love seeing the the slide. He went from ten to fifteen, so his value's getting cheaper. I would assume that's probably going to keep coming down. Apparently, he's activated coming back off IR, week. so he's going to come back, and you're going to get to see him. So that's going to be probably good for his outcome, unless his poor performances. Then they're going to be like, oh, he really sucks because either is hurt, hurt or again. doesn't perform or yeah. gets hurt again, right? So I could see this continue to down slope, and uh, you know maybe he goes into a playoff run with them or something. But still I mean, buying into AJ Brown, yeah. and I think that's a good call if he does get in the playoffs and blows up in a playoff game well we've talked about that a couple times on these last shows where all eyes are on him and you can see him he's going to probably kick back up a couple spots but right for now i'm still buying in on aj brown yeah i'm gonna just i can't quit him just yet and I'll, i'm gonna give him another year and I'm, I'm still all in he was my dynasty wide receiver one coming into the season he's wide receiver six uh in this draft and pick overall number 15 so i'm i'm still in yeah um Next. Cooper Cup, Whoa. love it. Hate it. <laughs> I'm just. Load entirely. <laughs> Not the man, the, the value. Love the man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm super mad at Cooper Cup right now because he just knocked me out of some playoffs. But uh, yeah, it's too high. It's too high to take a 29 year old wide receiver. I nope. mean, like you said, you, you when we talked about it and. and and had a had a playful back and forth. Um, he's great, and Stafford. He's definitely Stafford's go to guy. We've talked about this multiple times. When a guy switches quarterbacks, when wide receivers, a new quarterback comes in, you never know who's going to be the guy. And Cooper Cup's always been good, and, and always been a favorite of 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 us on the show here. We we vote, but but probably a little bit more Bobby Woods on the show than than Cooper Cup getting a little bit more of our respect. But Cooper Cup is is the guy now, and is 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 elite. The Breakfast Club is paying off, and but I you just it's 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 about value. That's why this is important. It's about where the value is and how, where you have to how, what you have to spend on them. And for me, at this cost, I I just can't I can't draft a twenty nine year old wide receiver at in the you know top of the second round, middle of the second round, and it just keeps going up. I get it. He's great. It's not that I don't hate the player at all. I just hate the ADP. I think with the list of wide receivers on this board right now, I would have him at the top, maybe not over A.J. Brown, obviously, but I like that he's 
that he's the next wide receiver on the board, but there's definitely some running backs to have to go before him. And then I, you disagree with me on where I would have him with the wide receivers because you probably would take Diggs and Godwin over Cup, right? Maybe uh-huh. maybe Godwin just tore his ACL, so it's, yeah. it's a little bit of a question mark there. Yeah, I mean, but Diggs is Diggs is old older too. So I, I mean, think he's like a year younger though. Yeah, so he but, an extra but, year and, and has two years left on his deal. So you get you get Diggs with Josh Allen for two more years, or Cooper Cup with Stafford for two more years. I would take Cup, but overall this feels too high. Yeah, I just I, feels feels too high for me. Can't can't. It was too high before, on the last ADP. Too high on this <laughs> ADP is what got higher. So yeah, uh, gonna Eight be a spots little too up. high. I no mean, six. He could have two outstanding years and just crush it for you. I don't think he'll do what he's doing right now again, probably ever, which is, again, why I think you're paying for last year's value with this year's draft. Um, so, But he'll still be good. I'm not saying he's going to die. Um, but that's probably my first hate so far, my real, real hate and my plums. Austin Eckler here, when we did the RB show, was kind of one of him and, him and Kamara were the older guys that kind of hung on for us, pretty much around the room. Um, so I don't, I don't love this, but I don't hate it. I could see being in the position right here where in most drafts that I'm in, some of these other running backs that were down here probably got elevated up and went because when you start playing for a little bit more money, I feel like a lot of the times running backs go a lot heavier than, than wide receivers do. And, and not all the time, but in, in a lot of the, in the, Decent amount of years I've been playing fantasy most years. That's what happens. So I could see Austin Eckler being down here, but but being the RB, you know, 13 or 14 already going off the board here because just a bunch of other dudes went off the board. Maybe not quite that much. Um, so I, I, in that case, maybe I would love it a little more. But right now I, I'm, I'm kind of indifferent. Yeah, I think it's I think it's properly rated. I, yeah. Maybe, it's, more maybe on, a little think, too high. I think I'm more on the hate than the love. I think, uh, yeah. Got, I probably got to bump him down. I got, yeah, a few spots for sure. Devontae Adams is next. Just the same vein. We're, we're, we're drafting, you know, a 27-year-old running back here or a 29-year-old who knows what's going to happen with the quarterback oh, wide receiver here You'd bet than that, Devontae Adams. You'd be, you're betting that. A Rod stays in Green Bay. I think that Aaron Rodgers is staying in Green Bay. It doesn't make much sense for me for him to move. Your division's weak. You could easily win it. Your defense is, is as good as it's been in a long time. That offensive line has functioned really well without some big pieces. They've done well, and Bakhtiari's coming back. You got two great running backs. You got Devontae Adams that you could, you know, kind of re up and, and get him there. Alan Lazard has, you know, had some good weeks here. MVS just had a nice little week. You, you know, you they got to bring in somebody. You else. need a tight end, and you would need to probably bring in somebody else. But I mean, they are like fifteenth in cap, so that's not the worst, right there around would, the league and average. If and you sign Aaron Rodgers to a long deal, and then just pl- manipulate the money a little bit, where you're giving them bonuses instead of, you know, a bunch eating up a bunch of the cap, kind of like the people Patrick can Mahomes figure it out. This and Godwin just got a little cheaper, <laughs> you know. Yeah, with the torn ACL bench, bummer, um, bummer for Godwin. So probably a little more on the hate side with that. I'm just probably not just drafting any of these older guys up this high. I just there's yeah. Not when I see a couple of those young running backs over there on the next screen. Right. So the next next guy up, Javante Williams. Love it. Love Love it. RB ten. Now maybe the Denver says, hey, we're going to bring in another guy. Whatever. But but whatever. Javante showed me plenty in this in in this season with Melvin Gordon, without Melvin Gordon, and then back with Melvin Gordon. I like everything that we see from him. We've talked about this multiple times. We have a solo video. We have video a conglomerate video of Javante Williams. Like I could see, as well as a lot of other people in this space, could see Javante Williams being up here at RB two, RB three, RB four by the time uh, season rolls around. And, you know, so right now I love this. If, you, if you're trying to assign value to these players, this is completely inaccurate because nobody is trading you Javante Williams right now at an RB10 price. Um, so, you know, that, that would be a Fugazi. Um, and I love it if I was doing a startup draft. Yeah, and this, this might have been, you know, these drafts could have been done before he had that game where it was m- no Melvin. And Either way, it doesn't it, matter. Like if you've been paying attention and watching, you could see it. And you know, if you're <laughs> if you're up on contracts, which you should be in Dynasty, you know, kind of the, fate, out of there. the fate is coming. Yeah. Um, and, and probably Fangio's fate is coming. So there's probably going to be a whole new regime in there uh, doing something a little different. Not, you know, not I love Fangio, but 
doesn't just they got might be a defensive coordinator face. They got so much going on right there that you just this offense should be exploding and you can't have it hasn't quite got over the hump here. Dalvin Cook at twenty. I'm going with uh, cake, cake, cake. just <laughs> maybe a little a little just too much going on off the field. He he looked rejuvenated here. You know this last game was was just okay. Hasn't done well against the Bears in a long time. Um, but yeah, you know, they, there's too like much. Two point seven yards per carry. They threw that stat up. I needed Dalvin Cook to have a big day, and, I, and then they they're like, oh, he hasn't done well against the Bears. I'm like, of course he hasn't. Too much unknown right now with Dalvin Cook with uh, the uh, to, off the field with off the field stuff for me to be comfortable. You know, drafting yeah. him in the second round right now. You don't have to take Dalvin Cook off. You just push him to the side for the time being right, right. now. Yeah, I agree. And I've seen people getting out of Dalvin Cook for like a decent player and a first, you know, might not be the worst idea. You're really mitigating some risk. Yeah. All right. Stefan Diggs next. Fine. It's fine. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Agree. <laughs> Debo Samuel at 22. Double hate. Double hate. Double hate. Can't take Debo in the second round. No fucking chance. He's Some, too one of our angry. YouTube commenters said that the that he didn't like there was no way that he was going to go in the third round because we talked about this in the I believe he said something like that. Well, here he's he's in the second round here in some some mock drafts, and I love the price that you were paying for Debo last year. Hate the price that you're going to have to pay for Debo this year. Now, after us talking about this and going and sitting on it for you know we've talked about this a couple times the Debo Samuel thing, I. Come around a little bit more, but there's abs- there's no way I could pay the second or third round price for Debo Samuel. I just can't do it, and that's and that's what this game is about. It's about figuring out where that vo- where where that value is, what round you feel like you can take those guys, and then breaking that into tiers and saying, you know, I got these five guys here that I could take in this range, and then that drops down to to these eight guys here that I could take in this range, and Debo has got to be out of that second or third range for me to be able to start talking about him. Just because of his play style, because he's so because angry. Of all, because of all, well, just a lot of factors. Just it it, it can go. Because what else? There's nothing. Can, I mean, well, we've talked about this a million times. Because it's it can the go, injury history can go sideways quickly with a with a player like Debo. Like you have Cordero Patterson doing great this year, but it hasn't worked out in years past. Now, I'm not saying that he's Cordero Patterson. He's clearly a much better player than than Cordero Patterson's ever been, but. In that same vein, I don't I don't like the volume that but the Debo, run, but he's playing running back. I don't too. like the volume that Debo because he's having can to play running back. See, but when you do look at the game logs for Cordero Patterson this year, you know the volume isn't there every week. But you know, if, as long as you can keep scoring touchdowns, which is we know is the flukiest thing that can that can hold that value up for you. I just feel like that could dry up really quick, um, whether it's short or big play touchdowns and when the volume's not quite there and and the running dries up a little bit and and they get a little bit more comfortable Trey Lance maybe comes in starts stealing touchdowns from running backs and running players I just feel like I can't spend this much money on Debo Samuel along with some injuries yeah I mean the second round pick is a lot second round picks a lot but I'm not mad at him because of the volume I think they've been dialing down his receptions because they're giving it to him out of the backfield so much and like yeah touchdowns are fluky but it feels like you just can't keep this guy out of the end zone like some people's touchdowns are fluky Debo it feels like he's already scored because he's just such a fucking monster and he has the the Debo mentality and and another gear uh and and vision and the run after the catch and and the the scheme that they have and he's exactly he fits everything they want to do I could probably I could probably go third round. I, you wanted to drop him down in the fourth. You're never going to get him. Basically, no, that's no. the point of this is that you're right. never going to get Debo anymore. I'm probably not getting Debo until we already have all the happens. Debo we're ever going to get because we got in way we got in early. And that's what we like any, to do around draft here. That I had this we're getting year, in early. Any draft that I had this year, Debo was on that team. Yeah. Any draft I have this coming 2020. Two Ayuk season, will be on that team. Was probably and and yeah, exactly. It was which guy Ayuk is not on a lot of my teams that I drafted this year because the value was uh, somebody always got him ahead of me, which saved me because I would have taken him. Um, and you know, I got I just got the Debo, and now if, if Ayuk wants to drop, if we want to drop Ayuk down a little bit, I'll be snatching up that Ayuk. So we'll see where he falls in this. So Chris Godwin, next guy, about to round out round two here. Um, 
without the ACL, I love it. I would love, love, love this. It might be a little muddy here coming into next season. You got a late ACL tear. Seemed like there was maybe also some other ligament damage. We haven't heard. But if there was, if the early report was MCL, then it's moved to ACL. There maybe there's, there's, you know, a little bit more in there. It didn't look good. He's a tough dude. He was up and running around afterward, um, and was on the sideline for a while. But he's on a contract year. We talked about him that he should go chase the bag this next year. Probably going to cost him a little bit of money. It's going to be a funky situation. How do they do the contract? And then, you know, you're off all off season with not being able to get probably with a new quarterback that you're probably going to end up being with. Maybe he does do a one year deal again with if Tom stays here and says, hey, I'm going to just stay in Tampa one more year. It'll help me Man, get back on my feet faster and get to another <clears throat> contract because I can have a good. I'm already acclimated to this system. I'm already acclimated with Tom. When I do get back on the field, I can show how good I am with you know, going somewhere else and being midway through the season and hardly had any time with the system and the quarterback that you're in to really build a rapport with. And you're not probably not healthy through from that ACL until and comfortable until halfway through that season. So people are like, what's wrong with Godwin? Right. You know, right. If he's not, yeah, they're, they're going to be hesitant because of the injury. And then if he starts off slow, which most people do, they're going to be just mad at him. And so, you know, the value's probably going down from what we just saw on that. Now, what I wanted to ask is, like, if he signs a one-year deal, it couldn't be the franchise tag, right? Because that, that would be too much money. He'd have to sign, like, a one-year, something they could afford, because I don't think the right. Tampa Bay cap situation is very right. good. Well, that, that well, that's kind of what I like. I feel like it, it would be kind of in that vein where, like, maybe he takes a little bit less money this year because he can kind of set himself up, hopefully, for... One more big for for a big payday after doing one more year if Tommy decides to reload it this year. Probably tough to get a huge payday coming off a torn ACL. Yeah, although I mean he does have a decent body of work in AC. I don't know. It's going to be just a weird situation, kind of moving forward here. Although you know, we love Godwin. Uh, we had Memphis on last week and he he had him thrown up in the top five, which I couldn't argue with. Um, this this hurts that conversation a little bit. Um, but I do think there is so, so much to like about Chris Godwin. And it's a bummer that we saw that shit box hit and then that dickhead celebrating while my man's still down on the field knowing where you just hit him. So a little bit of a scummy move there. I didn't, didn't enjoy that. That's why I did that stupid machine. They were doing a lot of that stupid shit. Um, so anyway, rounding out round number two, Antonio Gibson. Love, love it. it. Don't have a button for love it. <laughs> Sure. Horn's, <laughs> Horn's great. Uh, we've done a lot of Antonio Gibson. I love it. Guys just starting to blossom um, into, into a beautiful flower. Yeah. And, you know, seemed like he got a little nicked in this last game. That was just, you know, everybody had COVID quarterback situation. If they could just get a quarterback in Washington, even if it's just an Alex Smith type quarterback, like you just need a manager in there to be able to do something um, who's who's had some some reps in the NFL. I was excited for Ritzy Fitzy to to you know do something this year, and we got basically robbed of that. Um, so yeah, if you're gonna give me Gibson at the end of the the second round, gee, let me think. Yeah, just a um sure twenty three twenty four year old horse who could be who's been just just starting to grow into this position. Never been really a running back like this before, and very limited amount of experience and it's just he's just starting to grow and grow and grow and he's got all the athleticism six foot 220 so gotta love that so monster moving into the third round here elijah mitchell here that's gonna be a double hate Lose that's a triple Sorry. button it's a triple button <laughs> the trifecta um i'm a niners guy i've been uh, you know kind of told you to s- sell a little bit of Elijah Mitchell there for a little while and thought that, you know, hey, they love this guy, and I think they do love this guy, and said, you know, I wouldn't sell all my Elijah Mitchell because I have so much of him, but I might, you know, try to capitalize on if I could get a first and a decent player for a guy like Elijah Mitchell. And right now this might be telling me that that is a possibility. And at that at this point, would you, would you consider something like that, Mr. Wayne? I would. Uh, to see him jump up 46 spots here. From 71 to 25 seems a little aggressive now. Like I, like we said earlier in the show, this ADP is a little old. It always is because it takes them a little while to... God damn it. See a spot track. I'm almost done with spot track. You can 
<laughs> but they got all the fucking contract info. Uh, I'll just m- m- fool me once. Fool me can't get fooled again. I need <sighs> the George W. soundbite. Yeah. Fool me can't get fooled again. <laughs> There's a, there's a saying in Tennessee. It's probably Texas. Is, what an idiot. <laughs> That's some of the shit that these presidents say. I just like, how did they ever get there? Unbelievable. Uh, anyway, back to Elijah Mitchell. This didn't take into account the games that he's missed, right? That was the point I was trying to make. And if he'd have been doing what he was doing for the th- games that he's missed, what is it like? He's going to miss his third game in a row now. I think so. And then he missed a game before that. So if if if, if he had done what he's been doing and that was there, I could I could see this like maybe it's still too high, maybe not a triple double hate mm-hmm. loathe entirely. Uh so maybe it's a little bit of recency bias that we're so mad at how high this has shot up, but I think if it is this high, yes, I'm down to take a player and move on. It's just more that like all right, well now Jeff Wilson came in this last week and they other playing Atlanta and you know, finally get some games back under his belt and all of a sudden he looks great again. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, if they, I just system, I, system running back. It's not, it's not, a, it's not, I think Elijah Mitchell's great and I think they like him a lot. I just, are they going to stick with just giving him the amount of work that gives you the, the return on investment at, at, end of the second round, early third round. And I, I just can't say that for sure because right. there is no evidence to really right. support that yeah. argument. When are people going to fucking learn? They think they got the Niners figured out every time a running back scores some points for them, you know, or they draft a guy. It was like Sermon. He's going to be the guy. He gets vaulted up way too high. And what if it's a Mitchell Sermon fucking, you know, split backfield next year? Because well, I'm Sermon not too worried in, at all I'm about just saying, Sermon. Maybe but. they drafted Sermon. They must have liked something about him. Maybe there's some sort of sermon issue that he didn't get it and has been a little banged up or whatever. And but maybe now it's just that moving forward, it's a split between those two guys because they haven't been able to keep Elijah Mitchell healthy or, or whatever it is. Like I just, I'm always going to take the cheapest Niner running back, right? Like a couple of cheaper cheaper Niner running backs, like and right because no Niner running back in a long time has been up this high. Like it's well, always sermon. Been, was probably I mean, but that was close silly. to the that top was, fifty. That, yeah, but, but not, that's similar. Not we're, we're seeing this repeat itself, right? Like whoever the public thinks is going to be the main guy, they elevated up way too high. We've just been sitting back here taking guys we like that are cheaper, and eventually they get their spot, and then their value gets up, upticked. And now we're basically saying now to cash out. If this if this comes back around, and all all next year they ride Elijah Mitchell, and he's fucking good and i think he's good as long if he's on the field he's he good looks good man and he looks get, fucking good if he's getting the carries fine and i'll ride that back and i'll i will have lost the value on him and i'll draft him up at up in the top 12 then in the following year i don't have a problem with that but sometimes you got to sit out and just see what's going to happen and i'm just not sold on elijah mitchell um being the niners it's not elijah it's not it's not the guy it's the adp and it's the organization um all right, so we're going to speed this up a little bit. DJ Moore here at 26. Love it. Love it. I think that's great value. Um, Terry McLaurin, I think he is a, a fairly very good player. I don't know if he's quite in the elite category, um, but he's just never had a, a quarterback good enough to put him in the category of, of seeing if he can be elite because I think he could be in the elite category. Um, Agreed. He's having to elevate his quarterback play versus a quarterback elevating his play. Right. So I guess that would maybe be a little bit of hate for me right there, but especially with some of the other guys that you see on this board. I think that's more or less what makes it a little bit of a hate there, but he's, he's, he's been solid throughout his entire campaign. Uh, He's been hated on the whole, the whole way and just continues to prove people wrong, but a little too high. I would probably take the rookies. Yeah, so Deontay Johnson next. Love it. I would take him over some of those other guys above, for sure, over Debo Samuel. You um, taking Deontay over Debo? Yeah, and I would take Deontay Johnson over um, Terry McLaurin. I'm probably Stephon Diggs and maybe even some of those older guys. I fucking Woo. love I love Deontay Johnson. I think he should be up a little higher. So you might, yeah, then you absolutely love this. I would say this is properly rated but you can you can love it that's fair uh Jalen Waddle love it again love I think that. he could be elevated into the top five you have a you have a Drew Brees like approach with Tua it seems like um maybe you can get some shots downfield as things expand in that offense and as Tua gets a little bit more comfortable um and worst case scenario you get uh Deshaun Watson 
in uh, Miami, and I think Jalen Waddle has shown me everything I need to see from him as a rookie. Um, right. And, and, and he finally hit the ceiling. You finally saw him get loose on a deep cross, which is what he was doing all, right. all in college. And to see him jump up 27 spots here, um, that's 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 pretty good. And still good to see the respect. vastly underrated in right. my And opinion. still be underrated. When I wrote this out, I, I was like, yeah, uh, <clears throat> Waddle, still a deal here. Yeah. So Zeke Elliott next. Nobody cares. He's been dead for years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, T Higgins, I'll, I'll give you the floor on that one. What do you think? That's your, you know, you're a Clemson guy. Yeah. I, You've been lobbying for him. What yeah. Do you think? I mean, I think that's, I, I don't necessarily want to say that I love it, but I think that's properly rated. I think, uh, I think I definitely want some T Higgins <sighs> ranking him. It's tough, but, but he's still just a 22 year old dude, and for him to show what he's showing, and for you to see the flashes of the greatness that Joe Burrow could be, and, and has been, he's hit some down swings. But I mean, he's still a second year player, and this offense is really young, and T's so young that like I'm not necessarily worried about Jamar Chase for the long term. You know what I mean? You could you could make the argument, and, and I, I hear you if you want to say you know Chase is there. There's going to be the Chase games. T's definitely stuck there for two more years. Last couple games you've had some Boyd games, and it's been fucking fucking those guys up a little bit too. And because he's kind of the forgotten man there, and he's has, well, Chase didn't have anything either. Hashtag still good. Chase had bad games too. Like Burrow didn't yeah. have good games. Like Boyd was the only one that ate, uh, and it hasn't been the case for him most of the year, but. T is just so freaking young, and he is a second round draft pick, so there is no fifth year option. So, I mean, in a couple of years, this dude could be 24, 25 years old, going to somewhere wherever he wants, getting paid out the wazoo, and 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 have those extra years under his belt. Like, I think this is, I think this this is properly rated ADP. Uh, I would probably elevate him a little bit because I got you know Clemson Tigers gear everywhere, but just to see this man. This 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 freak. There's just not too many human beings that can do what Higgins does on the football field, yeah. with the size and athleticism, and just winning downfield, making your play, making your day in one play. Kirk D. Cousins, before Thielen went down, was supporting two top six fantasy receivers. I think Joey B. As he continues to grow in his career, will be able to support an entire offense. Uh, and obviously, you're going to have to deal with some ebbs and flows week to week with players, but that's just about any fucking player we've talked about on this list. Um, year to year, you know, you have, you got to deal with some ebbs and flows week to week. Um, so, you know, Chase was holding you down a bunch of weeks. Chase let us down uh, pretty heavy in, in a playoff situation, and it wasn't that fun. So, um, you know, it is what it is. I, 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 I don't hate this, and I don't love it. I'm kind of just kind of right in the middle. Um, wide receiver 16 for T. Um, I guess with some of the guys below him, I could I could be okay with that. Um, so, Yeah, if T you want to take Devonta Smith, that's fine. If you want to take Waddle, that's fine. I think I would take T over Deontay and maybe Terry. Mm. So I know I, you don't like hearing that. But. No, definitely not Deontay. And it, I mean, I guess if you wanted to make a case for a, over Terry because of quarterback play Five and years unknown. Di- age difference um, too. Yeah, and some age difference. I could I could be down. Five years that. is a lot. So. Um, so Derek Henry next on the list. Um, I guess. Cake, cake, cake. Yeah. But not really. But yeah. not really. I just uh, just when I see it there, I'm just I just I guess I I guess I just really don't want Derrick Henry. When I see him there, I right. still don't want him, and that's just telling me that I don't want him. It's not to say that he couldn't have another year, great year or two in him. Um, but I feel like it needs to be down a little further when you start talking about another great year or two. Um, mm-hmm. But again, if, if Henry comes back and has a great playoff run and stays healthy for another two or three years, he's clearly the engine of an offense. Um, and he's big enough to, you know, support the volume that he's getting. This is the first time we've really seen him go down for a long extended period of time that I can recall. Um, so true. All right. Travis Kelsey next in line, whatever. Um, Devonta Smith. i I love this. Uh, I think, I think he has, we didn't talk about him in the wide receiver show that we did a little while ago. And I, I felt bad after we got done with it because I feel like he can be a guy who could be up there. Like I, I had him over Waddle. Um, I think the talent is better than, than Waddle's potentially. We just, uh, you know, 
not hating on Jalen Hurts. It's just it's not a, a passing off. It's not a pass first, you know, read everything that's going on and, and be elite in the passing game. It's a run first offense right now. And, and I'm not saying that Jalen Hurts can't, couldn't. Made some good throws the other night. I was pretty impressed. Oh, yeah, against uh, Washington. A backup, just a marred uh, Washington team. Um, but he did. He, he did have some good throws. And I'm not hating on Jalen Hurts. He, he should. Give, he should get an opportunity somewhere else. It's probably not going to be the Eagles. So, unfortunately, the Eagles are probably going to go through another year of maybe even a coach turnover and quarterback turnover, which could slow the growth of Devonta Smith down even more. But I think this guy is, is truly uh, a special guy. So, I think, for me, I love uh, Devonta Smith at 34. I don't love it, but I like it. All I right. like it. It's all right. Keenan, a 29-year-old, 30, 30-year-old wide receiver here. Probably well, got to drop down a little bit Look at me. that 14 spike up, 14 spot jump. Uh, probably needs to go back down another round on that 14 <laughs> for me to be like, all yeah, right, I've, late got, third I've, got my, I've got my guys, and now I can just go ahead and, and grab a vacuum uh, here for the next couple of years. And even if he isn't elite Keenan, I think he could still be a, you know, a nice WR3 for you. Um, after after a couple more years of st- well, I mean, he is about to be like thirty years old, right? He's yeah, pretty still looks good, and, and but he's doing his thing, and and I think the, the the good weeks that he's had over the past you know quarter of a season or whatever is warranted why he's jumped up this much. But it it feels like to take a dude that old to bank on like one to two more years of that production that you're wanting as a third round pick, it's just a lot, man. Like I, I probably would have to take Devonta Smith, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire, I'm I'm still gonna be loving it. Yeah, but because I want to see, I want to hit the hate button. I hit the hate button. I want to hit the. I hit two buttons. Mm. Take, take, take. I'm still gonna ride with my guy Clyde. I th- I think maybe they they figure out how to use him properly, but it's it's definitely feels a lot more fleeting. Every than, week, it's just getting. He just feel like he's getting further away. I've I've been just so in forever, and it's just like. How long do I have to wait for him to have a blow up game and have, be like, oh, damn, this is why they took him in the first fucking round? Yeah. It's, why did they take him in the first round and they're not even going to use him like that? Well, Maybe yeah, he's just staying that's, banged up. Maybe and that's that's the problem. It's not, I don't, for me personally, I don't think it's him. I just need the usage to be properly done and it just hasn't quite all, been there. But it also doesn't seem like he's looked fantastic out there with his opportunities. Uh, sometimes he does and sometimes he doesn't. I don't, you know, I don't know. It doesn't I, look like Antonio Gibson out there, you know? Not Which currently. Gibson's way up for me. Right, but right. I'm just saying, it doesn't... I could, I could, both I the could, usage and the... Vi- like, what he looks like is it's starting to... I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to sour, like... The staying on, on Clyde Edwards-Alaire is starting to feel a little fleeting for me. I'm a big fan, uh, but... I just don't want to quite get off of them yet because I, I still believe in in the talent. I just I just feel like you need to use them properly. Um, so Patrick Mahomes here, man, eh, whatever. I mean, yeah, take, take, take. <laughs> guy here with any quarterback. Yeah, uh, George Kittle, uh, love it. Give me Kittle. I mean, you're just seeing. I mean, him and him and Jimmy are boys. Obviously, you know, Jorge could be looking at a completely different deal with. Uh, with Trey Lance here moving forward uh, with the volume, but we're seeing incredible volume right now with George Kittle. He's he's kind of the engine of this offense when it's just com- two completely different things because he's such a key blocker and he's so fucking elite on down the field after the catch, whatever, however you want to do it, um, that he's just such a difference maker and, and him and him and Jimmy are boys. Um, so Jorge here at, uh, you know, pick 38, let me get him. How do you feel about that? Sure. I mean, especially if we're talking tight and premium. Aaron Jones, 39. I like that he's dropped 20 spots. That definitely needed to happen. He went from 19 ADP in November down yeah. to 39. It's like, why in the world would you be taking that dude that high? I um, had a lot more problems with you people last month, mm-hmm. and this month it feels a little better. I need feels, a, feels right. like it got a lot a little better. I don't the festivus season being around. Yeah, you know the metal pole needed it's to come out last season, and it feels season. like you know it's uh, it's come back around a little bit better this go round with the ADP. 
still some names on that board that I'm looking at that I would rather have over Aaron Jones. So I, I think it's probably still a little too high, but at least it's bounced. At least the pendulum has swung back in the right direction. Yeah, at RB17, I'm starting to not hate it, and I, I think there still could be some some good years left in there. We just don't know what's going to happen right. he, with Aaron Rodgers, and if Aaron Rodgers stays, that's going to be a deal. Right, because he's going to be there. They have a – they have – they could get out of their contract with Aaron Jones in 2023 with 6.5 million dead, which that sounds like a lot for to cut a running back over. Yeah, he's he's going to be around. So I would think he's going to be there for another two years. Based on that, like I would, if I had to bet, I would put him at two more years in Green Bay, and yeah. then you've got you, you may or may not have a Rodge. You got AJ Dillon because he's on his rookie contract, eating into his share, which I would argue that. It's some of Aaron Jones being a little banged up, which he kind of is. So maybe they should work Dylan more in. And Dylan looks like an awesome. Like Dylan's awesome. We love Dylan. We'll get into him a little bit later when we get out of this fourth round. Or yeah, out of this fourth round. But because uh, I'm sure you want to bring him up. He's. A, I guess we could just talk about him. He's at ADP 63. What yeah. do you think of that? I guess I don't really hate that necessarily. It, I kind of se- hate it. It seems like it's it's maybe a hair high, but then when you look at the game logs, it, the game log really isn't terrible, and there's a couple of really good ones in there. I More think, catches than you would think, I too. I think, yeah, the PPR doesn't look bad. 28 I, catches this year. Obviously, there's a lot hinging on whether or not Aaron Rodgers stays around, but if he doesn't stay around, they probably leave more on the run. They'd probably become a little bit more uh, shanahan e even uh, moving yeah. forward. And I think you got a nice two-headed monster there, and Dylan has looked really, really fucking good. West and Cole at, and an RB twenty-four at that point, it seems like a, a reach when you're. I think when you're in that draft and drafting, I think I would probably have a bigger problem with it. But when I see the RB twenty-four next to his name, that feels pretty good to me. Right, feels like a good asset long term, and he'll be startable. And I'm not probably not going to be relying on him at that point because of the way that I draft. My running backs, I'm probably not going to be relying on him, but if I needed him to step in as my RB2 or a flex, I wouldn't feel that's a, terrible about that's it. That's a good point. Uh, I just, it's, this is, this happens over and over again, right? We have a bunch of AJ Dillon on our teams because he was so cheap, people hated him coming out, and we got him in rookie drafts in several spots, and, and, and we were pursuing him, trying to get him. And, you know, same thing with Elijah Mitchell. Then when they get their opportunity and ball out and everyone's like, it, the pendulum swings too far in the other direction, now it's like a little bit too much. And I'm like, right. I got him so cheap already. How can I now pay this? And and I'd be down because I think he's an awesome looking player. Like he's a, he's a, a hoss, a monster, and has some nimbleness to his game. And he's shown that he can catch the ball. He has game logs where he's had four or five receptions in, in a game. And he's only, he's only not caught two of the passes that's come th- his way. He's caught 28 of 30 targets. And, but Aaron Rodgers, question mark. And we just talked Aaron Jones is probably going to be there for two years. So, how, you know, it's, it's, Tough to invest in what you know is going to be a committee, even if both the dudes are good, you know? Yeah, that's fair. I mean, yeah. He, you don't have to pay Kareem Hunt prices for him, though. So maybe 63 down there in the fifth, sixth round. That just sounds like a lot. but It does when you're in there and, and, and actually in the trenches taking those grenades and drafting. But um, sometimes, I mean... We were in a spot, and then it's not really comparable. I think it was 10th round FFPC draft, but where we could have taken Michael Gallup, and we didn't. I think we did end up taking, I think, Hollywood Brown in place of him. Mm. Um, or maybe Gallup went a few picks before that, so maybe he, we didn't have to discuss it, but he, we were starting to, and, and you were hot and heavy on him. And I was On Gallup? Yeah. yeah. And I was kind of like, ah, you know, I really like Gallup, and I do have him in a couple spots, but... I don't think I want to draft him here in the tenth round. There's probably some other guys that might see more volume, and it, you know, maybe a little bit of a more short-sighted approach. And and now I wish that if he was available, that we could have him because he he's been pretty decent when he's on the field, startable for you in a flex, and you know, yeah. probably moving on next year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, you can get a little anything can happen and you can get a little short-sighted in some in some value but six round starts to be a little right bit of, for a dude you know. that, 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 that he's gonna be 25 before he gets his starting shot you know most likely unless something terrible happens there in high Jones. tread or low tread however you want to look at it with fair thick rubber fair yeah and he's, he's got, got quads hot. for days yeah 
High tread on the, on those High tires. Tread. All right, lots of tread. J.K. Dobbins next at forty. Love that. I think you're you're probably into that too. Uh, he he's gonna be he's gonna be much higher. I think. Um, he he went up from like September to November in ADP, and then just dropped six spots all of a sudden from November to December. I don't understand that. Yeah. I think he'll end up going up once he's yeah. once his reports of him maybe, running around. And maybe looks, it's Lamar looks being good hurt in camp, and you know, maybe it's Lamar being hurt. Is a question mark with Baltimore? I don't know why they would drop him six spots, but just he, uh, we, I think we liked him at the thirty four ADP in November, and if you're going to drop him even more, gee, yeah. let me think. I'm um, sure. Nuke at the thirty year old season, coming off uh, an injury here. I'm probably I don't necessarily hate it. I'm probably gonna hope that that gets pushed down a little bit, uh, but I'm probably not drafting him there. Yeah, he just if he wasn't hurt right now, it'd be a lot easier to be like, why not? Because he's stuck in Arizona for like the next four years. So if he can just be healthy and his game not fall off, he's gonna have an awesome quarterback and system to be in. So I don't, ah, I kind of hate it there. Chase Claypool, I think I'm I think I'm in a little bit in the hate category. I think I need to just see a little bit more. I know that there's could be some special there and he's a big physical guy and could be a great down the field threat, but for me right now I'm, I'm I might be pushing him down a little further as well. I could I could agree with that because part of me wants I still love Claypool and I love the player that he can be and I hate the situation that he's in where he's just it's just not working out. He's a little bit banged up. Roethlisberger isn't throwing the ball that well. It just how it long do you have the to wait? The situation isn't quite right for Claypool to really shine right. yet. And we're so talking about could be great value round pick. It actually could be great value, you know, in two years looking back, or it could just be this was way too high, and Claypool just is going to be one of those guys that's just a bunch of peaks and valleys. Right. I think this will probably continue to go down, and I would I'd be trying to get in a little bit lower, but I still want to get in. I just don't want to pay a fourth round startup price yeah, for it. Agreed. So double hate. <laughs> All right, Darren Waller's next. Hasn't quite panned out for you this year. Had the big uh, 40 burger to start off in premium. I'm still probably buying in him and Derek Carr, although we don't really know exactly what's going to happen with Derek Carr. We're just hoping for the volume with Darren Waller. We're always playing premium again. I would bump him up a little bit. I like Darren Waller here. Don't don't hate that yet. Uh, I feel like you know people are maybe a little bit down on him. He's probably up a little higher last year. So Yeah, I think he that. was at like... 19 or something in September and has really dropped held, held steady from November to December but his value's on the way down and I'm not out on Waller I'm Mark just, Andrews is next so two tight ends back to back you trying to start Waller this week if he plays I think I'm trying to you haven't had him Depends and if you made it to this if you, part if your tight end situation is just a mess I mean yeah. I'm just throwing back in there fuck it but if you right. if you got somebody who I guess you if know, you have to plug him in the tight end spot that's fine but I don't want to flex him yeah I don't want to force a second tight end with Darren Waller one week right off injury right. if he plays. All right, sorry. Just had no, to you're throw good. that in there. That's fine. Mark Andrews, love it. Love S- it. Super young, great great player. Uh, not enough respect on his name, Mark Andrews. So double love. Jerry Judy here. What if those touchdowns dry up, though? Mm. Now the, vo- the volume seems like he's, he's just Lamar's guy. Like, yeah. He and he's a him. stud. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Judy. Still holding on strong. I can't do it. I can't do it right there. I could get in. I just need him to drop. I just need to. I need to see the quarterback position be great. I know the game log's probably not as bad as uh, in my head, uh, but I probably need that to drop a little bit. Next guy on the list, David Montgomery. That's going to be a, a automatic love. Um, never enough respect on David Montgomery's name. Uh, just. Just been in terrible situations and just continues to be very strong. Um, and, you know, I think you can get some change over there next season. And, and hopefully David is the beneficiary of that. David. With, with da- <laughs> A little Independence Day. <laughs> David. David. Yeah. Love that. Need uh, that. Need that. <laughs> David. <laughs> I got to call my mother. <laughs> Uh, so this ADP, right, like we talked about it a couple times a show, a little delayed. Uh, Monty hadn't shifted from November to December very much. He had been hurt, hadn't had a great game, uh, has come back since since being hurt and has played well. Last game, I don't think it was great. Bears, I don't know what the fuck. 12, 13 points. In the I don't know what the game. fuck's going on with the Bears. They don't throw it to him enough. 
Maggie is out of there. He sucks. He can't convince me any more of it. Like, I, it, I, how does he still have his fucking job? Okay. I don't understand. Yeah, I mean, no, <laughs> yeah. entirely. Gotta get him. I mean, you can't be bald and wear a visor. Okay, you're gonna. I hate the visor in general. Anybody wearing a visor that sucks. But if you don't have a luscious locks coming out of that fucking visor, what are you doing? Mm. Like. You need you need a lot of sunscreen. You gotta you need like you gotta cover this. You gotta protect the dome. Cold or getting burnt or you right. Know. What visor bald visor? Like if it, it's not it's it's not bad enough. You're bald. You know no it's one not likes bad so- enough. You're wearing a fucking visor now. I gotta <laughs> look at the top of your head. Right. Fucking bald. I just don't like. I don't know what the play calling is. Fields. I mean, I want to cut him some slack, but yeah, he, that was a. That was a tough game to watch. Like the bad is so bad, and the good right. is the good is really good. And I, right. I like to judge you on how good's the good, and the but the bad is just bad fucking is awful. Real bad, you know. I, I can't can't make a decision on them yet. There, yeah. there's there's some good stuff to like there, but we got it. We got to see let the situation play out a little longer. It would be nice if he had a Allen Robinson that he could throw to, and right, and then they don't have Cohen and. So they're they're down. The Peters has been out. They got that left tackle just playing rookie left tackle who hasn't played, missed a lot of camp, hasn't played very much. He just came back. Um, had like three terrible penalties. It really had a bunch cost of them. bad penalties, but but I think he played better this this actual game um, from. I think he was at right tackle. Then Peters went out. He moved to left tackle, which I think is his actual natural position. Yeah. Um, so. Michael Pittman next on the list and was a guy who I thought was really ascending here, but the Colts seem to be just on on a, on a tear of just running the shit out of the football, which they should be. You got the best back in football. You got a great offensive line. Um, I, I think I don't necessarily hate this, and I, I want to be all in on Pittman because I think he is a, a pretty strong receiver, and I think Carson Wentz is, is still a pretty good player, a middle-of-the-road quarterback, I think, for you. Um, but... I, I think really, he's. I think he's a decent quarterback. It's just can he stay healthy? And then now, like they just, if you're gonna throw the ball four times, right? Then no one's gonna score any fantasy points right. besides a running back. And Pittman's been bad the last couple games, I well, believe. Ty's been back. I think that really Ty took yeah. a little bit of, and then they, they, they've been taking shots to Pittman, but he hasn't been coming down with them. So you're not getting these big plays. You have a couple of down weeks. You go just, you know, everybody was like. You know, John, John, that was a matchup to watch. I couldn't wait to see Jonathan Taylor versus the Patriots because it's like the Patriots take away the best thing you do. Mm-hmm. And Jonathan Taylor is the best thing they got. Right. And what do they do? They just ram it down their throat anyway. Right. And Jonathan Taylor just put that whole team on his back. And even before he broke that 70-yard touchdown run at the end, it wouldn't have been a great fantasy day because when your running back grinds out 100 yards and the team wins and they control the clock and, and possession time and, and just – take away the other team's offense completely it doesn't work out for you in fantasy unless they score and so that last but like you're not gonna bench jonathan taylor because he's going against the patriots you know right uh so i don't know we started with carson wentz back to Pittman. i think that i think that's probably good value you know he just dropped i think think that's that's a rational dropped he's he's super young yeah they're they're yep. really into the running game right now. It's recency bias at its best, and he's Perfect. still a young, good call. big, tall dude. I think this is I think that's good value on Pittman right there. Sustain. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike Evans Mike getting Evans. a little respect. Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, I guess he hasn't moved up or down. He stayed the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's that's about right. Uh, Josh Allen. Take take take. He's at fifty. Which I, I guess I don't really hate it, but I'm just quarterbacks right now. I don't want to talk about it. As long as it's the second quarterback. Off Marquise board. Brown. I think, I think I'm really. I, I kind of hate. You're all set on Marquise. I, think I kind of hate the fifty. The, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think it's you all like right. It? It's you okay. Like it? I don't hate it. I, just, I don't. Hate I'm just it. not ready for it. I'm not ready for it. I don't think. I've, I've, the value we were talking about. But 10, we, when we talked ADP last time, we were like he should be higher. He should be. High. How much higher did he go? I don't know. I don't have. I only did the first forty-eight. I'm not sure exactly where. That's uh, the most important time because if you don't find him, then you're not going to find him. Marquise Brown's at fifty right now. I'll I'll, I'll search for uh, uh, November. He, he probably should go up. I just I'm not sure I'm ready to pay that price for him yet. Banged up. Lamar thought he was progressing. Seemed to regress a little bit. And you know the blitzing was has been kind of fucking him up. We haven't been able to get to see him in the last couple of weeks. I, I do like Hollywood. Uh, He's, he went up from 52 to 50 from November to December. Okay. Well, I, 
I think he. I don't know. I, I got a hard time. I think taking him there, but he 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 produ- he, he had like what ten catches last game for yeah. fifty yards. Or yeah, so. bad mark for Mark. The backup. So <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that's a tough one for me. Ah, uh, let me get Marquise. Calvin he, Ridley. Yeah, I think that's probably when I was on the clock looking around. I, I guess um, Calvin Ridley gonna you know, abstain from that. I'm not really gotta sure move him to the on. side. You know, Rashad Bateman. I'll, although I do really love Bateman, he's made some great plays. I just. It's it's just too much going on over there already to really be this in debate for me. At fifty two? Right. It's not the player. It's the ADP in the system. Right. I think if if it's coming though, it's not too many more spots he has to fall. I don't think it's that out of the question, but may, maybe a round or two. Yeah, I just I feel like it's just gonna be if if Hollywood is here and that's fine, then there's no way Rashad Bateman can be there. And Mark Andrews was up there. I just no way. Mm-hmm. And they haven't had the running backs there. I mm-mm. Mike Darnell Mooney or uh, Bateman? Uh, give me Mooney. Mooney and Fields got something going on. He's just not. He's just not a one. He needs a. He needs right. a one. Mike and, Williams. Um, I mean, I would take Bateman over both of those guys as the player and the talent. At just the situation that he ended up being in right now, is I just I don't see it being able to be super consistent of being like, yeah, I can't wait to start Bateman. Whereas. Mike Williams, if he stays in L.A., it, it was pretty solid there for a little while. And I believe he's an unrestricted free agent. And, uh, you know, we just don't know how that's going to pan out. And, and Mooney has been decent this year, just not a, not a one. We need we need Allen Robinson to be Allen Robinson of old. And then Mooney slide in there as the two. Right. But A-Rob's out of there this year, so. All right. So Brandon Ayuk, I think that's probably a little high for me. I'm going to go. Take, take, take. Hate on that one. Amari Cooper, probably properly rated here. I feel like we talked about him the last time we did this. It's kind of like the Clyde Edwards when he's there. I think he does a lot for the Cowboys as far as coverage. You think he is kind of the alpha of, of what people respect and want to do over there. I think when he's right, he's great. Um, gets a little harder to, to keep buying, going all in on Amari Cooper, which I think is basically what you said last time we did this. He's not dead to me, but... It's getting there. He really I've, hurt us I last just week can't, with two points. Right, 2.8. It's but, just week the, after the, week. It's just like, how long do I have to keep defending this man? And I just take lock. You know, I don't want to have take lock. Next one's Josh Jacobs. Let me get that. Let me get that. I'm all in. Give me Josh Jacobs. I don't yeah. think he gets enough respect. That's Good way guy. too low at 55. Yeah. Only 23 years old on this little sheet. Good player. Needs to be throwing the ball a couple more times. Uh, and I think I think Josh Jacobs. That's a that's a great pick. Kyler Murray, eh? Just quarterback again. James Robinson. This I don't know what to do with this one. Hey, hey, hey. Too high. Good player. Too high. Not sure what's going to happen over there. This there's going to be a new. There's obviously a regime change already. Yeah. Um. I'm not. I'm going to assume that Trent Balky is going to stay there. I think, but. I don't know if if obviously Herb's out and we don't know what's going to happen. That regime just drafted ETN. We haven't seen ETN. James for Robinson, ETN I think, to be- is there for another year. Um, so I think it's probably a little too high here. But yeah, you know, if you can, if I can be okay with AJ Dillon, I guess I could say the same thing for James Robinson here. So fair, um, fair. Although the Dillon's with the Packers. Yeah, that's fair. And. It's tough to get behind anything the Jags are yeah. trying to do. If you're going to get the volume with the Jags and be the sole guy, then sure. E.T., baby. Um, but, yeah, that's he's definitely going to factor Give me E.T. over eight. Robinson. All Cam day. Akers here. I think, I think I'm in the love it. I think you could see him in the playoffs here if he comes back and has a good showing. And, and um, I could be okay with that. Um, I'd probably, once he was good again, try to move off of him. Um, right. Think, use him as a stepping stone. But I like the value here. Yeah, I can't argue. TJ Hawkinson, love stud, that. love this. Let's he gets a horn. Um, Travis Etienne. Oh, we got a good block here. Elijah Moore. Uh, this guy was wide receiver like four, five, six, three. I don't know from week seven to thirteen. Absolutely outstanding. That that long of a stretch, huh? Oh yeah, uh, I could pull it up while we're doing something while you're talking or something. Um, but he was. Absolutely outstanding. They've seemed to just while he's out there, they've kind of built the offense around him a little bit and, and manufacture touches for him. He just looks fucking awesome. I love Elijah Moore. I think he's going to be um, when he can log a full season and and really do his thing. 
Um, I think he's going to be way up there in the teens. Um, I think that I think he's that good. Um, People do love him. They want him to be that good. I think there's some specialness going on there. Um, So Lamar Jackson, AJ Dillon, we talked about already. Cortland Sutton. Um, I need I need a quarterback to to prove it to me that 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 the the Denver Broncos could be a real thing. I think the talent's there, but I'm not sure. Allen Robinson. We uh, I was planning on this guy being so goddamn good. And is, is he washed or is he is he just done with the situation there? He's biding his time. Now he, I think he hit the COVID list. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely a lost season for a Rob. It's a bummer that he's going to be like probably 29 coming in the next year. Yeah. Uh, August birthday, I think. He is going to get to go pick a place to go and play. I don't think he's dead. I, I'm still fine. Like, I'm fine. I, I can't sell my Allen Robinson stock right now. I, I, I'll, I feel okay coming into it next year. This right here, probably a little too high, I guess. It's just starting to really dry up. I mean... Yeah, this is getting not fun after after sixty five picks. Well, I like Miles Sanders here. I think that's a good value. <laughs> kind of seeing what's going on. If you feed him and 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 feature him, I think he could be good. He just He's took still over not that seeing everything well though. Uh, you know, that's always think, his, that was his knock. There's a, there's a couple things that I didn't like, but you, you could see a, a couple of things that you really like. Um, so I, I'm fine with Miles Sanders here. Um, and then you know a couple other guys on this list that stand out. Michael Thomas. I think that's uh, at. 71 Mm -hmm. i'll load that up again and uh, take that older receiver right there who was the dynasty wide receiver one uh not but a year or two ago because he could easily ascend up to where keenan allen is yeah and i like kareem hunt here at at Mm -hmm. 74 rondell moore at 75 uh juju at 76 steel like that um michael carter at 77 let me get Kadarius Tony. And then Kadarius Tony, I think Fryermuth right there is, has shown that he's already a red zone factor and uh, is it could grow into being a, a huge problem uh, for the Steelers or for opposing opponents of the Steelers there. That's a, that's pick eighty, and then Dallas Goddard down here. That's not that's a Fugazi. right when when featured and when and uh, and when thrown the ball his way at eighty five. I mean, give me all the Dallas Goddard that I could fucking get there, as well as Noah Fant down here. Mm-hmm. Brandon Cook still looking like he's got some juice at eighty seven. If Ugh. he could just be in an offense, so, went you know, down to some Brandon Cooks this weekend. Like like all that right there, and then Michael Gallup at eighty four. I think that's that's going to be one of those guys where you're going to just going to be glad that you swallowed it and took him. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, he's going to get to go somewhere else this year. And if he can just be right, he's a, he's a NFL wide receiver for sure. All right. You got anything else? You want to wrap this up? I like Deshaun down at one Oh one. Ramondre baby. Grab and hold him. Ramondre. Terrace Marshall, maybe get a little cheap ass Terrace Marshall. Wasn't quite Ramondre season, Steven. Ramondre Steven season against the Colts there, but yeah. Well, we've was gone a bad game plan. We've gone way too far past the top fifty, but yeah, that's what we do here. Yeah, so we really appreciate y'all. We'll catch you next time. We'll uh, we'll be back with plenty more to say. We're gonna start getting into college prospects soon. Got uh, Traylon Burks coming up. Uh, in, a, in a few weeks here as well as you know some of the other higher end prospects and we'll, we'll we'll get into you know a full wide range of those guys and we got like i said guests to come on to talk about those guys we got guests to come on and mock with rookie mocks uh so be sure you subscribe um merry christmas happy holidays yeah i mean take this time spend some time with your family you know don't get caught up in the presence and the buying and the consumption it's all stuck out at sea anyway so just get together spend some time with the people you love the stuff that's most important and uh, we really appreciate you joining us and i hope that everyone has a happy holiday uh we'll see you next week for something because we would i would love to take a week off but the youtube algorithm needs to be fed i believe so stick with us hit that comment leave us hit, hit us with a merry christmas happy holidays merry, merry christmas Kana, Kwanzaa. and uh <laughs> all right let's call it all we'll right. see y'all later peace <laughs>